I've had a lot of questions about Ford Intelligent Backup Power, which is really one of the coolest features that was seen on a new EV in recent memory that allows your Ford Lightning, like this red one right next to me, to power your home for several days in the event of a power outage. But a lot of you had a lot of questions about exactly how does this work, how much does it cost, and really what do the components look like? First things first, because this has been a source of confusion. The Lightning with Intelligent Backup Power does not use the onboard inverter. So these ports back here, they're connected to a 7.2 kilowatt inverter on board the vehicle. It does not use that inverter. It also does not use the 2.4 kilowatt inverter that powers the outlets in the front trunk area or in the cabin. That's likely because this vehicle uses essentially the same inverters for those functions that we find in a regular F-150. So you'll find outlets in the cabin right there, outlets in the bed, and outlets in the front trunk. Now, if you don't want to spend the money on intelligent backup power, and you want to back up your house yourself, and you don't mind plugging and unplugging things, you can, of course, use the onboard inverters. You can power a lot of things with that 30 amp connector right there. So again, a 30 amp 240 volt plug, and then you could definitely plug things like refrigerator, and lights and things like that into the other outlets in the vehicle. Now you are going to want to split up your load. So you're going to, want to put seven approximately kilowatts back here on these outlets. And then you can put some of the lower draw appliances on that front inverter. Now let's get back to the intelligent backup power system. If it doesn't use the onboard inverters, what does it use? Well, it uses a Sunrun external inverter and it essentially just provides DC power right out the same pins that you use to DC fast charge your vehicle right down here. To make this work, every Lightning with the extended range battery pack is going to come with one of these guys right here. This is the 80 amp EVSE, sometimes also called a charging station. And you can see that for an EVSE, it has a very unusual plug. It actually has a CCS DC fast charging plug. And that is not for DC input, that is for DC output. You can see that it plugs right into the vehicle, just like a DC fast charge cord. So it is a little bulkier than the included slower charge cord with the Lightning. Yes, this does get two charge cords if you get the extended range battery pack. And if you have the smaller battery pack, you can buy one of these from Ford for $1,310. As far as 80 amp EVSEs go, that's actually a pretty decent deal and it should be compatible as far as charging goes with a lot of other EVs. Now, as far as power output goes, that's a different matter. You can see back here that this is rated to put out 420 volts DC, 34 amps. Actually sort of inputs 420 and outputs 420 because it's really just going through that EVSE. It's simply making the connection. All the magic happens inside the Sunrun boxes. And that's why this system might be compatible at some later date with something like a Ford Mustang Mach-E, but it's unlikely to be compatible with a wider variety of EVs. That is certainly something to keep in mind here. It's based off of a specific voltage profile and of course all the software integrations in the Ford Lightning. And this is not a universal software set, so it's not like you're going to be able to get, I don't know, an Equinox EV or a Hummer EV, plug this in and expect it to work. It will plug into charge, but it will not offboard the DC power. Now let's get back into the Sunrun components. When you buy your Lightning, you're going to start getting emails from Sunrun about installing your EVSC, and that would be that 80 amp unit. Now, you don't have to use Sunrun to install that. If you want to get a local electrician to do that, you can do that. And if you just tell Sunrun to bug off, then they will end up shipping you that EVSC to your home probably about a week after you get your Lightning. That's how I ended up with mine. One thing I was surprised by is that you don't need Sunrun to install the integration kit either. The entire equipment package is around $5,000. All in for my installation quote, it was around $8,900 of installation. That includes the inverter, a small lithium ion battery pack, and basically a transfer switch. There's also some additional wiring needed for a wide variety of different situations. I had thought about installing this system at my office here in San Jose, but this office uses three-phase power, so that would have made things a little bit more complicated and I just didn't really want to bother. And at home, it just turned out not to be a great idea because of some of the distances involved. I live out in the country and the parking area is quite far from the house. That would have been a bit of a bummer to install. Now Sunrun can also install the EVSE and that approximately $9,000 did include the installation of the EVSE in this particular case. That alone was about $1,600 or oddly enough, more than the EVSE cost itself. 
In theory, the logical reason that Ford went with an offboard inverter rather than an onboard inverter in the truck is that this makes the system more compatible with future EVs. Although, again, this is the only EV that the system will work with. And those future EVs would have to be approximately 400 volt nominal EVs in order for the system to function in the first place. Essentially, the Sunrun inverter system is one of their solar backup inverters. And kind of a cool twist, you can combine the system with a stationary battery pack at home. So if you're worried about, say, the power going off and you not having any backup power if the truck isn't at home, Fear not, there is a solution for that, but obviously it's gonna cost you even more, probably an extra approximately $10,000. So pretty expensive there as far as stationary backup power goes. You might be better suited by getting a backup generator in that case. Of course, if you then bring your Lightning home, you could plug it in and save that battery for later. Now let's talk about the integration inside the Lightning. So let's just go ahead and hop on in here and turn the truck on. As far as the truck is concerned, the settings happen here in the infotainment system under intelligent backup power. Once you have a station paired with the vehicle that is an important function, then you'll be able to adjust the settings. You'll be able to, for instance, tell the vehicle to automatically start transferring power or wait for you to tell the vehicle to start transferring power. And that's why the default Sunrun system has a teeny tiny little battery on board so that way you can keep itself alive while you're deciding what exactly you want the vehicle to do. You can also decide how much power you want the vehicle to basically offboard, whether you want it to drain the battery completely or leave some reserve for later. And then of course, you can tie that with the charging settings for the vehicle where you can decide how much you charge the battery and where you're doing that charging. So if you want to make the most use of this function, you're probably gonna to wanna to have your battery pretty fully charged pretty much all the time. And of course, keep in mind that if you roll in at home on a darkened Friday afternoon and you only have 20 or 30% battery, that's all the battery pack you're gonna have left to power your home. But then this is a really big battery. The battery in the Lightning is 131 kilowatt hours, which is pretty large even for an off-grid setup like mine. I do live off-grid at home, and this has a usable capacity about 30% larger than my off-grid storage array. So for me, I would be able to survive for maybe about two days off-grid, but everything is gonna depend on how much power you use and how much power you can choose to conserve. Because if the power goes off and you want the battery to last longer, you have the option of what you wanna turn on and what you don't wanna turn on. Well, that's it for the how it works. Now the question, is it worth it? I would say rather unfortunately, not in my case, I think a standby backup generator that runs on natural gas or propane would simply be more sensible for a lot of folks out there. This system can provide a reasonable amount of backup power, but if you need more, if you need 15 kilowatts, say you have a house that has two heat pumps, maybe a larger two-story house, etc., or you want to run your oven or things like that, you might be able to do that with a standby generator for less money than installing the integration kit for the Lightning. I probably would simply stop at using this 80 amp EVSC. I would certainly install that because that is definitely gonna make the Lightning charge a lot faster at home. Something that I could definitely have used a lot of the time that I was driving this Lightning, but I would probably not end up getting the intelligent backup power installation option. Another solid reason is because we already have over seven kilowatts of onboard inversion capability back here. You just have to run an extension cord. You could install a much smaller transfer switch in your home. You could have uh, an electrician do that and that would be an awful lot less expensive. In fact, a recent quote that I got from a local electrician to do that at home was only about $1,000 to install another sub panel, have a transfer switch installed that was manual, and then you simply run the extension cord to your lightning. That is going to be significantly less expensive. But if you want this system to be automatic, Ford has the only system going and you're only going to find it in the lightning. Let me know what you think about that down there in the comment section. And of course, I'll see all of you later.